Thanks for joining us on 9 News Plus. I'm Chris Bianchi. How could climate change affect Colorado in future years? I spoke with Daniel Swain, a noted climate scientist from UCLA, for a bit more perspective on just how climate change could impact Colorado weather in future years. Here's my interview with Daniel, which was recorded on January the 19th in Steamboat Springs. All right, so Daniel, I guess from a broad perspective, when it comes to climate change in Colorado, what are those top line things that you're noticing, How what we can expect in the coming decades? Well, I think we've sort of gotten a taste of it all, really, in the last few years. Uh, we've seen severe fires, we've seen some major flooding, and even some big post-fire debris flows, especially you know along I-70 corridor, uh, along with record-breaking heat. Um, you know, we've seen some of the hottest temperatures. You've seen in Colorado's most destructive wildfire, mm-hmm. along with some pretty significant uh, severe weather events as well. All of this is really what I would expect to see more of in the future uh, in, in a warming Colorado. But I think that one of the things that we've seen is that there's a, still a lot of variability from year to year. Uh, last year, for example, uh, 2022 was not a particularly bad fire year uh, in Colorado following what was really a terrible year, just uh, you know, 12 months before that. Um, so I think even in a warming climate, we still do see these reprieves. So even as things get warmer, as we see more extreme dry events, more extreme wet events, uh, you know, we, we really need to be preparing for both of these things, for I- increases in hydroclimate whiplash. And in, you know, Colorado is a state that already sees a huge amount of weather variability, even mm. from hour to hour, let alone year to year. Uh, but that's something that, you know, I think it really affects uh, the kinds of impacts we're seeing in this part of the world because we already have a lot of variability. And for some of these sorts of events, we're going to see even wider swings between, between extreme wet and extreme dry. Is that the way you would look at this busy snow season to start in Colorado? Uh, a reprieve, is that the way you would label it uh, from an overall warming climate? Yeah, I mean, in 2022, certainly, I mean, the fire season was a, a reprieve compared to any recent year. Um, it, it was it was remarkably quiet mm. in Colorado, which I think has been a bit of a, given people a bit of a breather. Um, this year, this snowpack is doing is doing quite well uh, as well. The challenge with snowpack, I think, is that the American West in a warming climate, we're seeing a bit of a divergence between the lower elevation regions and the really high elevation watersheds, where the lower to medium elevations, especially in the coastal mountain ranges like the Sierra Nevada and the Cascades along the west coast, uh, are seeing pretty rapid declines in average winter snowpack because they're at a lower elevation, the temperatures are more marginal, essentially they're, they're a little bit warmer and closer to the freezing point to begin with, so if you warm a couple of degrees, you're already on the wrong mm-hmm. side of freezing. Some of the higher elevations in places like Colorado are at a high enough, uh, essentially, elevation that the average temperature can rise a little bit and you still get a lot of snow. Some of the highest peaks might even see a little bit more snow in a warming climate because there'll be more moisture and it's still just cold enough to snow. But the lower elevations are likely to see less on average. Uh, but what's interesting is that doesn't necessarily mean we'll see fewer extreme snowfall events. In fact, there's some, there's some indication that we may actually see just as many, if not more, extreme snowfall events, even as average snow events maybe decrease at lower elevations. So thinking more along the front range itself, along the urban corridor. So lots of interesting dynamics at play, and we're sort of seeing a lot of it in real time the last few years in Colorado. We're getting a taste of many of these different sort of flavors um, of, of what we're likely to see moving forward, but more of these things, I think, is what we're likely to see in the coming years. So more extreme snowstorms, for the, perhaps for the front range, but when it comes to the front range itself, a lot of people living at five, 6,000 feet, I think it's one of those places that you highlighted in your talk. Um, is there the potential for a snowless or a near snowless season along the front range in the coming decades? Well, there are indications that when, when you're below about 7,000 feet in the American West, that we will start to see the emergence of, of individual snow seasons that are very poor, where, where there's essentially very low to almost no snowpack, even at peak seasonal accumulation. That'll be a dramatic change, mm. but it isn't going to happen every year. There will still be banner snow years even embedded in that. So the variability of the snowpack is likely to be increasing really throughout the West, especially at these more moderate elevation locations where more people live and frankly, where more of the land is, where more of the watersheds actually are. There's not too much territory above 10 or 12,000 feet. A lot of the land in the West is is at a significantly lower elevation than that. So, you know, we may see um, increased variability of snow from year to year. We kind of saw this in the autumn of 2021, where there was essentially no snow to speak of, Mm. 
uh, right up through late December when we had the catastrophic Marshall Fire in, in Boulder County. Um, that was an extraordinarily slow start to the snow accumulation season in 2021. Uh, but then it turned out to be that the 2021-2022 winter was pretty good uh, overall. So we saw that that transition from extremely dry conditions, record dry and warm conditions, in fact, in the autumn, to very snowy conditions during the winter immediately after. So again, that, that variability sort of widening the envelope on these swings in snowpack. Thanks, Daniel. Appreciate your time. Thank you again.